many miraculous and interesting things set apart Jagannath Temple from any other temple in India. Puri Jagannath, situated on the east coast of the country, is not only the totem of crores of people in Orissa, but it is also a symbol of collective faith of people all over the world who believe in Sanatan Dharma. When you step inside this marvel, you will find the idols made of wood instead of metal or stone. The flag that has been hoisted on the temple waves in the opposite direction of the wind at any given time of the day, the shadow of the main dome of the temple will not fall anywhere on the ground. The sound of the sea is not heard when one steps inside the temple. Jagannath has an important identity among the four dhams mentioned in the Rigved. The essence of many mystical stories are associated with the origin of the god and one who dedicates oneself to the mighty. Their sorrows are taken away. People who dedicate themselves call the temple as Shri Mandir, Prasad as Mahaprasad, the flag as Patitapavan, which means the saviour of fallen ones. Dwapar Yug was about to end and 36 years had passed since the battle of Mahabharat. By the curse of Gandhari, the friction between Satyaki and Kritavarma that had started with the duel had now ended the entire Yadav dynasty. Shri Krishna started to spend the rest of his life in the forest as he was completely alone after Balram returned to Vaikunt. Once a forest dweller named Jara was roaming in the forest in search of a prey. Jara figured that a deer was standing among the bushes. So he prepared his bow and aimed at it. Jara's target was perfect with a flow of dark red blood. Jara had realized his victory. Then a painful scream hit his ears that pierced his heart and shook him for a time. His arrow had accidentally hit a man and not a deer. After what Jara saw in front of him, he was very angry with himself and started cursing himself because Jara's arrow had hit the leg of a man resting in the middle of the bushes, which Jara had mistaken for a deer. That man was none other than Dwarkadesh Shri Krishna. Furious at himself, Jara asked Madhav for his own death as punishment for his sin. But Bhagwan Krishna was neither angry nor did he express any grief. He simply smiled a bit as he witnessed Jara crying and cursing his fate. How could he, who orchestrated the Mahabharat to end unrighteousness, not know his own fate? Seeing Jara in discomfort, Shri Krishna consoled him by saying that it was all predetermined that Jara had not become the killer of Shri Krishna in the Dwapar Yug, but the cause of his liberation from his earthly body. Bhagwan sensed Jara's eagerness and told him the story of himself and his previous birth. How it was by his hands the death of Bhagwan was predetermined. In the previous birth, that is Treta Yug, Bhagwan Ram killed the mighty monkey King Bali. Although it was necessary for the establishment of the righteousness, but it was against the rules of war. Shri Ram had resorted to a deceitful method to kill Bali as he shot the arrow by hiding behind the bush. Jara could not understand why he was being told all this story. What was he to do with it? Well, his curiosity did not last long when Shri Krishna told him that he was the incarnation of Bali of Treta Yug. In this birth, the fate has reversed as this time Jara was the one 
who shot Madhav from behind the bush. It was all an unbelievable dream to Jara. But he too was compelled to believe it. After all this, Jara along with Arjun performed the last rites of Shri Krishna and saw the complete destruction of the city of Dwarka with their own eyes as per his instructions. When they took the body of Shri Krishna for cremation, they saw that the whole body was absorbed by fire. But the heart remained. The fire had no effect on the heart as it still throbbed. Arjun and Jara immersed this remaining part of Shri Krishna in the sea. And from that moment, Dwapar Yug ended to give way to Kali Yug.